Tonight, she will be sharing with us the results of her experience, giving a five to seven minute speech entitled, Purple Madness Experience. Let's give a warm welcome to past distinguished governor, distinguished Toastmaster, qualified speaker, and brownie master, Linnea <laughs> Millett. Thank you, Madam Toastmaster, fellow Toastmasters, guests to come. What an experience. As a past to governor, going through the ranks, I put on an experience of a lot of contests, but had not been intimately involved with one for way over 10 years. And this was a learning experience. Actually, I had retitled it Purple Madness? Yes. <laughs> so it's close enough to explain. I decided to serve the contest chair for two people that I really admire and like and want to support, especially Kathleen Lubin, who's an area governor, and Glenn Thornton, who I don't, I'm not sure if all of you have met him, but he's somebody that gets rambunctious, a big heart, and somebody that I wanted to lend a helping hand. So I volunteered to put on their contest, because I realized I would need an HPL to snag that second I chose to have Glenn and Kathleen and Cersei as my guidance committee members. How many of you have done an HPL? So you know what I'm talking about? Okay, so an HPL, you have a project that's done for a team, but you have a guidance committee of three individuals. They give you a hand, three guidance committee members, so three of them. So I figure they like one to three people on your guidance committee. So I chose these three for two reasons. Number one, I didn't want Glenn and Kathleen not to know anything about putting on a contest. It is very valuable to know how to put on a contest. So not only were they on my guidance committee, they were on my action team. I chose Sissy because she has put on a contest. She knows what it takes. And she's brutally honest with me. I could count on her to give me feedback in terms of what I did well as a leader and ways that I could improve. So I will share a little more about that later. The vision of the contest, how many of you were here when I shared the vision speech? I see a standing room only contest with 90% of those in attendance wearing purple. The theme was purple. The theme worked well. Those who didn't necessarily care for purple got purple sickness because there was a heck of a lot of people wearing purple and a lot of purple balloons and purple tablecloths that worked very well. So I will share this with you. Picking a color as a theme is very easy to implement and very easy for people to participate. That was a success. I see people playfully pushing one another out of the way to deposit their raffle tickets into the fabulous prizes of their choice. This indeed happened. We had outstanding raffle prizes. And there were people purchasing lots of tickets, and we made a profit, or made an income solely with the raffle, because the contest was free, $422. That's a lot of money. Yes. And, and we were ended in the block, way in the block. So that was a success. I experienced a program that unfolds like a well-oiled machine. All functionaries performing excellently. Contestants feeling honored for their participation. And guests feeling energized and inspired by the events. I see non-Toastmaster members wanting to join Toastmasters. Well, I have some things to say about that. Behind the scenes, it was pretty chaotic. Pretty chaotic. My number one right-hand person to help me in a pinch, 
Sophie, was standing at a different location to redirect people. The lo contest location was changed two weeks before the contest. The Granada Hills Fire Station decided to bump us. Thank God our chief judge, for some reason, was at the fire station and noted we were bumped. She went right to Woodland Hills and secured the Woodland Hills fire station for us. We had no idea how many people were paying attention to the email. Really looked at the new flyer. I sent out an announcement twice. The second time I said, please acknowledge this to let me know you got it and you know where to go. Three people responded. And that went to like 30 people. So she was planted at Granada Hills to physically, with a smiling face, <laughs> say the contest has been moved. This is where it is. Here's a map for the world. But nobody showed up there. So everybody did know about the content change, but most of the functionaries came very, very late. But that wasn't the real chaos. Had I had a registration table, things would have gone so smoothly. We set up the night before that, and we decided to not set up the registration table because it was in the lobby and not something that could be secured or locked. Well, the next morning we find out that nice long table leaning against the wall that we were going to use for a registration table was busted. Oh. So Glenn and Kathleen were saying, well, we're all ready with this Glenn. I don't think you were there for that conference. Well, do we really need it? I mean, after all, nobody's paying anything. It's free. And in my head, and in the chaos, I thought, well, yeah, it's free. I guess it's not that important. We're not collecting money. Mm -hmm. Wrong! A registration table is important because the people who are coming can be, can be vetted. They are a contestant or a judge, and if they are, here are the forms you need to fill out, and there is the chief judge. Go. And if you're a guest, have a seat, buy some raffle prizes, help yourself to some food. The registration table has a protocol list. So when the dignitaries come and sign in, they can note and make a check on the protocol list. The district government is here, the past district government is here, the area, these areas, so they could be appropriately introduced. Many of the functionaries, which is excellent for this contest, were new. They have not done this before. We don't know what they look like. Oh. <laughs> and they don't know who the chief judge is. So you have all these people that want a standing room only contest. We don't know what the functionaries look like. The functionaries do. Annette, thank goodness, was so skilled and she's assertive and she just pulled it together and made it happen. So that, ladies and gentlemen, is really the downside of the contest. The, the part that I want to elaborate on, the part that I really learned a lot from. And how could I have known? I've never done free before. But let's talk about what went right. Like. We had an outstanding postmaster. He was a gentleman that wore all purple at the conference. So he was a logical selection, in fact, the inspiration for the purple magnet scene. He did an excellent job making sure the minute of silence was observed. Remember, he pounded that gavel, made us be quiet for that moment of silence. He did an excellent job interviewing all of the functionaries. Part of the high performance leadership project is to develop myself as a leader. So I took that quiz. And I rated pretty high in a lot of areas. After all, I've been a person after 25 years. But one of the things I tend to do is do it all myself. Well, in this project, I tend to do not quite do enough. I'm just a little bit too hard off. So I'm learning to find that delicate balance where you oversee, and I did do a good job guiding Glenn and Kathleen, but at the day of the event, I could have been a little more hands-on to make sure the chief judge wasn't experiencing 
pure purple madness. Was the project a success? I have to say yes for one very important reason. Kathleen told me this morning, her clubs, those who attended, were so inspired by the well-organized, well-executed, and excellent level of competition, they are already preparing for the contest in March. So for that, I say this was a successful project, and I'm going to march down that hug line in the November fall conference. Madam President. <laughs>